You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Sharon, I don't know about Joe Chadwick. Uh, see here, Joe Viuzo, but don't see Joe Chadwick or Massimo, right? Right. I just heard from Massimo, um, who um, said he had a competing event he didn't realize was conflicting with the meeting. Um, I asked him to, you know, get back in touch, and I would let him know if we were down a member. Um, but I haven't heard from anyone else other than Fred who said he could not come. Um, and that was it, so I respect everyone else. Okay. There's Joe, so. so. Yeah, it's Joe, so we got five, so we have a. We're good then, okay. Yeah, so he, he can, we don't need him to get. We'll get back in touch. <laughs> okay. Is uh, is Evan here? I hear it. Evan is here. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I think everyone's here then, right? I think we're set. Uh, I think it's just seven now. Is what I got. Okay. I have seven o'clock uh, right now. What the heck? Maybe we'll start the meeting on time. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Since we're all here. Okay, so then why don't we call recording we call in progress? This, uh, we will call the meeting of the Brantford Planning Zoning Commission to order it is Thursday, July 21, 2022. And I have now 7.01 p.m. We will introduce members of the commission and staff. And I'll just call your names and please indicate if you're here. Uh, Joe Chadwick, are you here? Joe Chadwick is present. Joe Bayuso. Joe, are you here? Joe Bayuso is here. Marcy Pelosi. Marcy, are you here? Marcy Pelosi is here. And Sharon Hutner. Sharon, are you here? Sharon Hutner is present. And uh, I am Chuck Anders, chair. And our staff here this evening is Harry Smith, our town planner. Harry, are you here? I'm here. Our <coughs> planner, Evan Brining. Evan, are you here? I'm here. And I believe our clerk recording secretary uh, lurking is uh, Michelle Martin. I will ask before we begin if, uh, if our secretary can read the notice of public hearing. Marcy, do you have that? I do. The Planning and Voting Commission of the Town of Brantford, Connecticut hereby gives notice of public hearings to be held on Thursday, July 21st, 2022 at 7 p.m by remote technology to consider the applications listed below. Information regarding how to participate in the public hearings will be provided on the commission's meeting agenda that will be posted on the town's website at least 24 hours prior to the meeting. Item number one, application number 22-6.2, special exception for grading with one, within 100 feet of a critical coastal resources resource for additions to a single family home located at 85 Sunset Beach Road, 85 Sunset Beach LLC, care of Kenneth O. Roos, applicant and owner. 
Item number two, application number 22-6.5, special exception for a daycare center located at 221 West Main Street, Joseph Barbarata applicant, Nitten Day Associates LLC, care of Ken Ginsburg owner. Item number three, application number 22-6.4, special exception for a multifamily dwelling located at 43 Elm Road, 43 Elms Road, LLC, care of Kurt Witt Wittick, applicant and owner. At said hearings, all persons will have the right to be heard. Copies are on file in the Planning and Zoning Commission's office at the Planning and Zoning Department, 1019 Main Street, Brantford, Connecticut 06405. Written communications may be sent to the above address or to planning and zoning at brantford-ct.gov. Chuck Anders Chair, thank you, Marcy. We'll follow our normal format for public hearings, and that is that the applicant goes first, makes its presentation, including the presentation from any experts or consultants or engineers it may have with it. After that, we turn it over to the commission and staff. We typically have a summary of a staff report re reviewing, uh, the, uh, reviewing the application and any uh, staff issues raised by the staff, and we open it up to questions, comments from commission members. At that point, we open it up for public comment. And in a second, I'm gonna ask uh, Evan or Harry to review how you can participate. You will state your name and um, make your public comments. After the public portion is done, we allow the applicant to respond to the public comment and then we close the hearings. Uh, but we don't, it's certainly uh, not untypical for hearings to continue more than one meeting particularly on, on larger applications, although we do what we can to see if we can get them done. So that's our normal format. Um, and after we close the public hearing, what happens is we may or may not deliberate them, decide on them this evening, depending on how the things are going. Uh, with that, um, I'd ask Evan or Harry to review the pro with the people participating here, people viewing how the public can participate when we get to the public portion. Uh, sure, once the uh, chair asks if anyone would like to comment, um, down at the bottom of your screen, uh, there is a reactions button. Once you select that, there's an additional option to raise your hand. Um, please utilize that, or you can indicate in the chat that you would like to speak. And if you are calling in by phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand and indicate that you'd like to speak. Uh, and we would like to ask everybody to please state your name before you begin your comment or question. Great, Chuck Anders, uh, Chuck Anders Chair. Thank you, Evan. And, and so we'll proceed with our first matter on our public hearing, and that is the uh, continued public hearing for Sunrise Cove Association Inc., uh, the Sunrise Cove Camp, um, Robert Candelera, the applicant. This is a zoning regulation text amendment to amend to add a section 3.3a and add a new section 3.b regarding pre-existing summer cottage camp campsites. Uh, we had opened the public hearing and uh, there were some, uh, was some public comment and we had uh, continued that. Mr. Perito, are, are you prepared to uh, move forward now? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, thank you for the record. James Perito, I'm an attorney at Howard and Sage, 265 Church Street in New Haven. I'm also a resident here in Brantford. Um, I think where we left off at the last hearing, uh, the, the adjoining neighbor uh, association, Lanfords Cove Camp, had submitted some suggested uh, additions to our application. And it's my understanding from an email I saw this afternoon to Evan was that the uh, attorney for that, uh, for that group, uh, uh, Mr. Burdun, uh, requested that that be withdrawn. Um, that I think upon further consideration, I know from conversations with my clients and members, they felt that those additions uh, were not something that they wanted to suggest to put on. Uh, you should have also received over the course of this week, uh, letters, emails, and support from many of the residents that live at Sunrise Cove. Um, to my knowledge, there have not been anything in, in opposition to this request. Um, I do know that uh, in speaking with staff, there was a couple of suggested additional changes, which I was going to mention tonight. Uh, one of which was to, and I believe the commission has the authority to accept or revise anything that's put in front of you when it's a regulation. Um, there was a, a little bit of concern in the language that said replacement units may be increased in height, coverage, and floor area, floor area so long as the entire site 
meets the bulk standards of the applicable zone. And so um, there was some concern that to the extent that you had a specific unit that might uh, be in the side yard, that that would prevent a completely separate home from being renovated and, and, um, and increased uh, to a year round use. So what I had suggested, I sent an email to Evan just a little while ago, because I got the call late, was that we would say something um, as follows, that you would take out the word bulk. So you'd say, replacement units may be increased in height, coverage, and floor area, so long as the entire site meets the coverage and floor area standards of the applicable zone. Uh, that way, um, it, it, it proceeds with the intention here, which is to uh, allow a specific unit uh, pursuant to our rules within the Summer Scope Association to be made year round. Now, I think we've mentioned before that um, whenever any of our individual units are seeking to become year round and increase their size a little bit and go up maybe two stories, um, they have to comply with our internal regulations and rules. And one of the things we make them do is if they're in the existing side yard, they have to pull out, they have to move you know, away from it. So they may, if they're at eight feet, they have to pull off to be 10 feet. Uh, and over time, we've been able to make those units that I'll have uh, become year round residents be more in compliance with the bulk standards in the R2 zone. So I think with that, um, unless there was other questions, I think uh, I did wanna point out that there was maybe a little, a little question about where this would fit in. And in the actual application, we do say to amend section 3.3A subsection two to add number two, which is pre-existing summer cottage huh. campsites. That actually is, if you look at your chart of uses, um, which I have right in front of me, um, I thought I had it right in front of me, hold on one second. Um, in, that, in that chart of uses, sorry, uh, and under, under permitted use and activities in this zone, it actually has a, a, where it says zoning permit required, which is the intention to make this by a zoning permit. Under subsection two, it says reserve. That's where we were intending that you, you would put in the pre-existing summer cottage camp sites. And then later in that section three, because we also say in our application, C section 3.5, which would be the new verbiage that we proposed that is the standard for the pre-existing summer cottage camp site. And that would, that's also in an area after the bulk standards, you have 3.5, it says reserved for future use. So I think it, it, it you have the space pretty much right in your regs to, to slot this in if you were so inclined to do it that way. Dr. Anders Chair, thank you, Mr. Perito. Um, anything else at this time or? Uh, again, Jim Perito, nothing further, Mr. Chair. I'll be happy to answer any questions of any of the commission members or if anyone in the public has a question. Uh, Chuck Anderson, thank you, Mr. Perito. You actually addressed some of the questions I had had um, so that the, the text amendment did include the addition to 3.3A2, so to add that in there. Okay, that makes that's good. So it's clear that this would be by zoning permit versus some other uh, way. And then, um, it's, it's clear that you're, this doesn't allow construction of any new dwellings. It's just the uh, renovation or replacement of, of the existing dwellings. That's, that's correct, right? Yes, that's correct. And the intention is that because we are pre-existing, anything you do now to any unit is technically uh, a change of an, to, to, and the non-conformity, which you can't do without, without getting a variance. So, um, you know, we have, we have very strict internal controls on this. It's been that way for 50 years. So um, it'll continue that way. Okay. And the change that you're suggesting on the, on the, looks like the second sentence, replacement units may be increased in height coverage and floor area. Um, so you're, um, and, and I'm assuming it may be increased in conformance with the underlying zone, correct? Correct. Right. Um, so long as, because the next one goes on, so long as the entire site meets the, and you're deleting uh, or, or you're adding coverage and floor area standards of the applicable zone. And deleting Correct. Bulk. Deleting bulk. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. That, that, um, so, so what that means then for compliance with the 
coverage and floor area for the entire zone. The floor area, it it's looks like a 0.5 floor area ratio for the R2 zone. And you, so that's a limitation on how big you can build. That Correct. You can't that's build right. extremely high or, or whatever, because that's still a limitation. And also with the coverage. So you're looking at the entire site. So you, you would stay within those limits. Again, Jim Burrito, that, that is correct. And, and if you look at um, uh, what we've done in the past, historically, you know, the, the most that the cottages increase, like in their footprint, might be from like a 650 range to maybe a 750 range. I mean, they're, they're, it's very modest and it's adding a se typically a second floor. Uh, so these, oh. are, these are not big mansions by any stretch. Right, right. And, and, and presumably the floor area and coverage limitations would prohibit the thing that we match sure. you know, that, that you're suggesting, so, okay. Um, thank you. Um, any, uh, Ev Evan, do you have any uh, further staff comments or uh, with respect to this application, Evan or Harry? Um, no, I think Attorney Perito covered most of it. Uh, the only updates to my staff report were really just uh, outlining the additional materials that were sent out to the commission members uh, last week which were the revised language uh, after my original staff report, the neighbor's proposed language, which they have now rescinded, uh, and attorney Perito's response to those su suggested ch language changes. Um, and then I really just sent all of those documents to the commission members, and I was planning to uh, do a final review of the language, maybe after a discussion with some of the commission members to see which direction they wanted to, to go in. Chuck Andrews here, thank you, Evan. Uh, are there uh, questions, comments from commission members or, and staff? Joe Vayuso, I have a question. Go ahead, Joe. Um, I'm just wondering if it ever happened or is there any consideration if uh, two, one, two or three units combine into one? unit is there any situation for that to uh, minimize you know in other words to, to get more land build a bigger unit to combine two or three together as one that's something that can be in consideration someone can ask for that situation can i answer that mr chair yes sir okay, okay. uh jim perito again for the record um uh, mr Vio, so I, it is conceivable that someone could buy several of the existing units um, they'd have to first obviously go to the, uh, the, the building uh, committee of the association and have to show their plan. Any building that they then would recreate would have to be in conformance with the standards um, within not only the association, but certainly within the zone. So you could be eliminating individual units. That is a possibility. So we, again, we'd be more conformance. You know, we'd be going from 35 to maybe, you know, 32 at that point. Um, and the building itself would, again, have to meet the overall floor area and cover standards. Uh, so, you know, it would, you could take maybe three of them and it would make it, you know, uh, you know one, one building. So you'd be covering one area. But again, that would be in compliance. And any of the buildings that were within the coastal zone uh, would have to obviously have an application to show what impact, if any, um, they would have in that regard. So that's that remains unchanged. Mr. Chairman, if I could comment as well, this is Robert Calderella, president of Sunrise Cove Association. Certainly. Um, I just just like to add to that. Um, our standards prohibit the combining of um, of of lots. Um, so the 30 something cottages that we have right now will continue to be that way. Um, unless someone actually knocks one down and doesn't rebuild. So our internal standards um, do not allow for what Joe's uh, suggesting, and it's an excellent it's an excellent point. Uh, and it's something we've dealt with over the last you know 40, 50 years. But uh, our standards don't allow for that. Thank you, uh, Chuck Anderson. Here. Thank you. Other questions, comments from commission members or staff before we open up to the public. I did have one additional question, and we may have discussed this already. Um, but does the applicant? plan to remove the PDD that was established uh, just because the conditions of 
year-round occupancy and the height limit. Um, I'm not sure if those would still remain in effect if it were to remain. Um, uh, for the record, Mr. Chair, Jim Perito, if uh, I had some discussion with staff about this, for some reason, it hasn't been shown as a PDD for quite some time, so it wasn't clear whether or not it actually, at some point along the line, was removed. Uh, there does not appear to be a record of that. If if this board, uh, if this commission uh, approves the regulation, we could certainly file a request for the removal of the uh, the SDA PDD because it would not really be applicable. And we don't, you know, we don't believe it's applicable, but we could certainly file that request to removal. If that's needed. Uh -huh. Harry Smith Town Player, and my understanding is if it is applicable, then essentially you've got a PDD that sort of freezes everything in place. So I think it certainly would be an incentive to go ahead, should it be deemed applicable, you know, to go ahead and remove it and rezone it R2. So everything would, you know, you just applying for at this point would work. Uh, Chuck Andrews here. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so technically the map even though it's not on the map, it still says R2 on the map, it may be a PDD, in which case this is just a text change. So you would probably need to get that removed. I mean, officially or whether, I, I guess it's up in the air whether it has been, but I don't think it's officially been removed, I guess, but I don't know. Yeah, Harry Smith Town Play, we have no record of that. We do have um, the 2014 uh, change to the official zoning map that did not show it as a PDD and whether the commission by virtue of making a motion adopting that map technically to remove the PDD, I think is the question. So we yeah, can check okay. that out with town council and, <laughs> and see what his opinion is of it. That's uh, it. Maybe we already did it when we- Maybe we did it by default, yeah. Exactly. In 2015, okay. Yep. Okay, uh, any other questions, comments from commission members? Uh, if not, then let's open it up to the public. Any member of the public wish to comment? Um, we did receive a number of e emails that have been distributed to commission members. I know I've, I've read them. I expect commission members up, but any, any member of the public like to comment? Yeah. Evan, we'll, we'll let you handle, recognize. Uh, uh, sure. It looks like first up is uh, Richard Callahan. And it looks like- You are muted, Mr. Callahan. Now you're unmuted. Oh, no. Oh, there, you there you go. All right. Okay. Yeah, I needed my five year old with me to, to <laughs> manage that unmuting. For the record, Richard Callahan and Beth Cunio, we are owners at 33 Sunrise Cove. Uh, we are here today to uh, voice our. Uh, our approval or ask the court, uh, ask the, the court, I'm a lawyer, ask the uh, commission to, uh, to approve uh, the amendment, uh, the regulation. Um, I'd like to point out, I read through uh, the zoning regulation purposes, and I would suggest that I saw nothing that was inconsistent with your zoning regulation purposes uh, or contrary to any of those zoning regulation purposes uh, by way of this, this new regulation. So I would uh, urge, urge approval. That's the extent of my comment. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. Thank you. Uh, anyone else that would like to speak, uh, please down at the bottom of your screen, uh, the reactions button followed by the raise your hand function I am not seeing anyone. <clears throat> okay, um, it doesn't look like there's any other members of the public wish to comment. Yeah, are there any uh, further follow-up uh, questions or comment? Mr. Perito, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, Mr. Chair. Any questions, comments from commission members or staff? Looks like not. Then I think we can close this matter as a public hearing. Maybe we'll discuss it and see where we're going with this later on. I'm not sure what we'll do with it, but maybe we may have a chance to bring it up and talk about it. So thank you. So that matter's closed as item number one is closed as a public hearing. That brings us then. To, so then thank you very much.
Brings us into item number two, which is 85 Sunset Beach LLC or 85 Sunset Beach Road, a special exception coastal site plan for a single family home with an addition. And uh, is the applicant uh, here on that one? Evan, do you know who's uh, who's representing the applicant on this one? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, Harry, could you make uh, Marcus Pudock uh, co-host? Um, Harry Smith Town Planner, I just did. Okay. So you should be able uh, to unmute yourself at will now. Yep. Good evening. Uh, my name is Marcus Pudock, uh, 26 Broadway, North Haven. Um, I'm for Godfrey Hoffman Hodge Associates. I'm here representing the applicant. Um, this is a single family residence, which uh, the owner intends to um, increase the size of by a very small amount and of both the house footprint and the, the deck in the rear. Um, because the, the house as it exists now is in the side setback, um, a, a few of the uh, a few of the additions will need to be moved over um, outside of, to be within the setbacks. Um, the, the primary thrust of, of this uh, proposal is to raise the house above the flood elevation um, in conformance with FEMA's requirements. And um, it, because this is in a, a velocity zone, um, there are that, that's pretty well the, the crux of what's happening here is, is it's essentially just a, a raising of the house and, and a small increase to the rear deck to make it more functional and a small increase in the front of the um, building in order to also make that more functional. The, the, the increased size in the front is essentially a stairwell to get to the, to the remaining floors and, a, and an internal elevator. Um, as, as the applicants um, age, they wanted the ability to be able to get up and down through the flights um, in, in an easier fashion because this is a three-story house. Um, that is the crux of the uh, application. We've, uh, we've shown um, the proposed silt fence around the, the entire construction zone. Um, it, it is a relatively flat site and no excavation of any significance is, is proposed. Um, although the building will be, you know, some, some disturbance to the existing grade will occur um, as they dig under the existing foundation and jack the house up. Um, it, this this uh, parcel does front directly on Long Island Sound and is within 100 feet of the, um, of the sound and therefore needed the coastal area management and needed to come before you to, um, to ensure that no disturbance um, to the coasts or to the Long Island Sound uh, occurs because of this uh, proposal. And we believe that um, this is a benefit both to the town and to the homeowner and to the piece of land. Um, raising the house out of the uh, and to the neighbors, in fact, because raising it out of the flood zone reduces the risk that any any flooding damages this house or or has this house damage any of the neighboring houses. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any specific questions on this application. Um, uh, Chuck Anderson here. Thank you, Mr. Puddock. Evan, did you prepare the staff report and would you like to review it with us? Uh, I did. Like Mr. Puddock stated, uh, this house or this uh, proposed expansion is less than 100 feet from that mean high watermark of the Long Island Sound, therefore it required a special exception as it, and is in front of this board this evening. Um, they meet the R2 district uh, standards and this is applicable as the Lot was created prior to December 3rd, 1956. Um, although they are in the R3 district, 
that was the only concern I really had. And Mr. Podock uh, provided the information right away to me. Um, they did not provide a landscaping plan. However, no new landscaping is proposed. Uh, same goes for the lighting. Uh, and a condition has been added to ensure that any new lighting will be compliant with their regulations. They meet the parking standards um, and they have provided erosion control measures around the area of disturbance. Uh, the commission will need to find that the measures proposed to the extent they are alternatives from the Connecticut Deep 2002 guidelines for soil and erosion control are acceptable. Uh, and based on the application materials, uh, it appears to satisfy the special exception criteria as well as the coastal site plan criteria. Um, staff recommends the following findings and conditions. Finding number one, the coastal site plan is consistent with the goals and policies of the Coastal Area Management Act. Uh, condition number one, prior to the start of construction, erosion control measures shall be installed to the satisfaction of the zoning enforcement officer. Uh, and the lighting will be compliant with section 6.7. Chair Candace Chair, thank you, Evan. Questions, comments from commission members or staff before we open it up to the public? Hearing none, then, then let's open up to the public. Does any member of the public wish to comment? Evan, you see anybody? <laughs> I do not see anyone at this time. I'd just like to remind everybody down at the bottom of your screen, the reactions button followed by raise your hand or you can indicate in the chat that you would like to speak. I do not see anyone at this time. Great, uh, check in to share. Uh, uh, just, well, Evan, one question just on the, I, and I know that, you know, diligence pointing out the, the standard light condition that the light has to be compliance, but do, do our light regulations apply to single family dwellings? I mean, isn't that what this is? I, I wasn't sure. Or Evan and Harry. Uh, oh, go ahead, Harry. Uh, you can go. It's fine. Go ahead. Uh, I, I still think some standards apply like uh, up lighting and, um, uh, any light bleeding onto your neighbor's property, things like that would still apply. Okay. Uh, however, I think you're right that a lot of the stuff about uh, commercial lighting wouldn't really apply to a single family home. Okay. okay. So whatever is applicable applies, I assume. Right. Sure. Any, any other uh, uh, question? Uh, well, Mr. Puddock, do you have any further comments? Uh, no, no additional comments at this time. Okay, anyone else, commission members or staff, have any comments? Hearing none then, I think we can close this matter as a public hearing. This is probably something we can take up in a little bit. So uh, thank you, Mr. Puddock. Thank you, Commissioner. That brings in to item number three of our agenda, which is four, th three Elms Road, LLC, which is the, uh, at four, three Elms Road, a special exception regarding renovation of an existing apartment building. And I understand that, uh, Apparently there's a, there's been a delay because uh, it didn't, they had to go get a ZBA variance and they weren't able to get on the agenda or it wasn't able to get done. So we're, we're not in a position to open this as a public hearing. Is that correct, Harry? Harry's been found, go ahead. Harry's been found planning. Yes, that's correct. Um, and the butter's nose has not been sent. So we're going to re-advertise this for the September 1st meeting. Okay. Likely. So Okay, so then we, we will simply not move forward with this <coughs> one and we'll pass it and the expectation is uh, we'll re-advertise it and open the public hearing at our September 1st meeting. So uh, thank you on that one. So we're passing item number three and then we move to item number four, which is Joseph Barbaretta is the applicant and Nitin Day Associates LLC, care of Ken's Gin Ginsburg is the owner. It's 221 West Main Street. Special exception for daycare center. Is uh, an applicant ready to proceed with that one? Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, commissioners. My name is Joseph Barbarata, and um, I'm the applicant for the exception to install a, a playground for a daycare center at 221 West Main Street in the uh, Lakeview Plaza. Um, the um, th this um, 
playground will be uh, 2,000 square feet. It's uh, 20 feet off the building, uh, off the sidewalk, and 100 feet long. And uh, one of the concerns was whether we were going to actually um, uh, affect the impervious uh, um, layout of, of, the, of the property. Uh, we're putting in wood chips, uh, so that is not affected. Um, so it'd be a four foot high fence around this area. And um, it, it, uh, we, we know from our center, we've been in the, uh, uh, the business for uh, over 20 years. And so we know that there are state regulations and as to the square footage and how many kids we can have out in the playground at a given time. So um, I think all this is uh, pending state approval before we get our CO, but um, we're looking for approval of this application to put in that playground. Um, I'm not sure what other information you require, but I'd be glad to answer any questions I can. You, you, you describe it as a check interest here, as a, just an application to put in a playground. Is there an existing daycare center there? That, that... No, there is not. This is a, this is a renovation of a, a single story building. It's 8,700 square feet approximately. Um, um, and we would have doors exiting into the playground. So this would be uh, completely enclosed. Um, and we realized that, you know, this would uh, require a sign off by the state uh, before we'd be able to get our CO and get open. So um, our, our plan is to try and move by the end of September. So um, that's why we're on your agenda tonight. Okay, so, okay, uh, we'll have, uh... I, I wasn't sure if it was the, the application was for the uh, to allow the daycare center itself or just the playground. I mean, the oh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Harry Smith, town planner. Sure. It actually is a special exception approval for establishing the use, which includes uh, establishing the playground. Okay. So it's really for the use. You're correct. It's for the whole the whole thing. Okay. Okay. Um, can we? Uh, um, Evan, did you prepare the staff report on this one? I did. Uh, so as you all just discussed, a uh, special exception change of use for the daycare center. Uh, Mr. Barbarada and his family have been running uh, the same uh, See Us Grow Child Care and Learning Center at the adjacent property at 249251 West Main Street. Uh, they are now proposing to move to this location with the addition of the outdoor play area um, as the only real changes to the site plan. Um, they do meet the bulk requirements for the BL district uh, and the applicant has not provided a landscaping plan. Uh, however, uh, they do not propose any other landscaping other than the buffer around uh, the, the play area. Uh, and they also have a, uh, a landscaping modification from 2020 and a condition has been added that uh, compliance uh, with section 6.3 landscaping uh, has been added to my staff report. Um, Mr. Barbarat has provided me with the parking information. Um, I did not have it for my staff report. However, he has told me that um, 22 staff members and 105 children will be enrolled. Uh, that is a requirement of 40 parking spaces. This site has 249. Um, I know that our last application here required a little under 20 parking spaces. So I think we still have over 100 spaces to work with. Uh, so I think staff feels that uh, the site has had multiple uses here, all sharing the parking, and it seems to have been adequate for all of those other commercial uses. And we feel that it will continue to be so. Uh, with the addition of this daycare center. Um, they have not provided a lighting plan. However, I've added another condition that would ensure that the lighting has to be compliant with section 6.7. Um, and finally, onto the requirements of the daycare center use from section 7.6a. Uh, one of the requirements is the site plan shall demonstrate compliance with all facility requirements for daycare as specified in the Connecticut Public Health Code. Um, this information has not been provided by the applicant and in past applications for daycare centers, this has been a requirement to go, uh, that 
needed to be provided before approval from this board. Um, however, staff has uh, provided conditions that would allow the applicant to get this information to planning department staff before a certificate of occupancy can be issued. Um, I think they have to provide that information anyway to get their state approval. So if you guys are comfortable with um, adding those conditions onto this approval, uh, we can go in that direction. Uh, there are some additional requirements. There had to be a letter from the East Shore Health District describing the safety and adequacy of the drinking water and sewage system, uh, along with the letter from the Brantford Fire Marshal as, and the Brantford Building Official, uh, just stating if there was any concerns about the actual structure. Um, again, conditions have been added that would require the applicant to uh, provide this information to planning staff. Uh, so if that is something that the commission is comfortable with, again, we have added those conditions. Uh, based on the application materials, with the exception of those outstanding items, uh, the special exception criteria are satisfied. And staff recommends the following conditions. Uh, prior to the issuance of a certificate of zoning compliance or certificate of occupancy, the following shall be addressed to the satisfaction of the town planner or his designee. Uh, confirmation in writing that no changes to the exterior lighting. Uh, confirmation in writing that all facility requirements for daycare centers specified in the Connecticut Public Health Code uh, are submitted to the town planner as well. Uh, the three letters from the East Shore District Health, the Brantford Fire Marshal, and the Brantford Building Official to be provided to, uh, to planning staff as well. And finally, confirmation that the existing parking spaces are adequate for combined uses of this property. That last condition I added this afternoon after Mr. Barbarata provided me with the uh, information needed to calculate the parking requirements. Uh, condition number two, all landscaping must be maintained in a, as an ongoing requirement of this approval. And finally, condition number three, all conditions of the previous approval shall remain in full force and effect. Chair Candace Chair, thank you, Evan. Questions from commission members or staff before we open it up to the public? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Harry Smith Town Planner, <clears throat> just for clarity, I probably should, um, in condition number one, and the first uh, paragraph there, or sentence change, should the shall, just again for clarity. Sure. Chair Commissioner, thank you, Harry. Any, um, any other questions or comments from commission members or staff before we open up the public? Hearing none then, let's uh, open up and see if there's any public comment. Does any member of the public wish to comment on this application? I do not see anyone at this time. Thank you, uh, Evan. Um, okay, so uh, I guess we can close the public portion of this and uh, does the applicant have any further comments? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I, I just like to thank Evan for his uh, helping me navigate through this. I, I'm new to this process, but um, we're fully aware and, and, and understand the requirements that we have to get from the state before we're gonna get certified. We have been meeting with fire in uh, the building official to make sure uh, uh, we're in compliant uh, as far as all the state requirements. So again, uh, I, I thank, uh, thank Evan for the help and, uh, and um, we're ready to go. Thank you. Great, uh, Chuck and Sharon, thank you. And you indicated you have scheduled those meetings with the fire official and building official? We, we sir, uh, Mr. Chair, we actually did uh, meet with them just to lay out to make sure we're gonna be, um, you know, we're going to present them the full plan after after we come here to but to show the number of kids that are allowed in each room and and all the requirements of the state again and um you know so we're fully aware of what those state requirements are so um we're working with fire and health in uh, health to make sure and uh building to make sure we'll be in compliance okay thank you yeah Chuck and Shear, any any other questions, comments from commission members or staff? Uh, and if not, then I think uh, we can close this matter as a public hearing and it's something we can discuss uh, in a little bit, I think. So thank you, uh, Mr. Barbaretta. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That brings us then uh, to uh, our minutes. 
of uh, July 7th, our July 7th, 2022 meeting. The minutes were sent out with our packet and emailed to us. And uh, I don't know if there were any people have had a chance to review those, but if you have, if someone want, would like to make a motion to approve the minutes of our Thursday, July 7th, 2022 meeting. Move to accept by Chadwick. Okay, Joe Chadwick makes that motion. Is there a second? Joe Vaiuso accepts. Joe Vaiuso seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor of accepting the minutes? Joe Chadwick, are you in favor? Chadwick in favor. Joe Vaiuso? Vaiuso in favor. Marcy? Marcy Pelusi? Marcy's in favor. Sharon? Sharon's in favor. And Chair is also in favor of accepting the minutes. Um, any correspondence? I just would note that Mazamal Liguri is here now. Um, okay. So I think you could unmute yourself, Mazamal, I believe. Well, let me fix that again. I think he came back on. So you should be able to unmute now. I am. I've been here since Marcy um, um, read the, uh, the minutes there. So. Oh, okay. Great. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, um, any correspondence, Harry? Uh, Mr. Chairman, again, Harry Smith Town Planner. Yes, we have three items of, uh, regarding cell tower equipment swap outs. Uh, one is at 4 Beaver Road, which is a little side street off of uh, West Main Street. Um, I think near Firestone is on the corner of it. Uh, there's another one at 171 Short Beach Road. Um, and a third one at 123 Pine Orchard. And basically these are, like I said, all equipment swap outs, a um, little bit of groundwork, just again, some, like, I don't even know what these things are, up converters, rectifiers, cable, but it looks like things that are swapping out existing equipment for other equipment. Nothing significant in terms of new structures or anything like that. Okay, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Harry. That's it for correspondence? That's it. Okay, then. So let's then uh, go back over the public hearing items, at least get a sense of where we are on them. Uh, um, could I just note that I believe uh, Ms. Liguri is up for voting, because um, I think uh, Sharon Hutner voted last time. Okay, so... Yeah, that's uh, correct. Okay, so Ma, it'd be, be Mosmo's turn. I yep. would ask uh, for the first one is the Sunrise Cove, the, the zoning text amendment, and we opened the public hearing last time. Marcy, did you, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to review the uh, public hearing uh, from the last one for that one? Um, I did most of it, yes. I'm okay. trying to think, it went, that one was done before West End, was it not? That, that was the, the, the zoning text amendment that we- uh, Yeah, but that was presented before West End, was it not? Anyway, I think it was the first one on the agenda last then I time. heard it. Yeah, I heard it. I heard it. Okay. Yeah, that was, um, okay. So then you, you're in a position, if you heard, if you listen to the, uh, or watch the video or listen to it, then you're in position to uh, vote on this one, right? You, yeah, I just didn't get through the whole meeting. Okay, yeah. So that was early on, I think, so. Thank you. Okay, then. So um, we can bring this up for discussion and see wh where we are on it. This is, uh, again, this is the pre-existing summer cottage campsite. Um, you've seen the, the, the text amendment. The text amendment, essentially, uh, it's Lanfear's Cove and Sunrise, uh, um, Sunrise, yeah, I guess that's the, the Sunrise Cove. Lanfear, I mix them up. Uh, Sunrise, the applicant. And the idea is to, I, I think, allow the renovation of the existing dwellings which are all non-conforming because you're only supposed to have one dwelling per lot and there's like 30 or whatever there are there's many many more than one so um the the issue is uh this would allow them instead of doing the pdd route which uh you know we had in place for a while but the issue with pdds is they expire if you don't do all the work and uh or having to go before the ZBA and get a variance and show hardship, which, you know, who knows if you really entitled to that, that this would allow them to make renovations of existing cottages and bring the individual cottage, not add new ones, but to bring them up to 
conform in what well, you could conform to the bulk span, the, the height and the coverage. What, what was it? It was the, uh, the height coverage and floor area. So you could have a bigger building. You could expand it uh, as part of that renovation in conformance with the underlying R2 zone, which is, I think that's a, that's a fairly, uh, you know, it's a smaller zone. So, so that, that's the proposal. Um, and there were some technical issues that came up during, during this that, um, you know, we heard that the, there was a, basically an alternative regulation that was proposed by Lanfear's Cove, but apparently that's been withdrawn. And I mean, even the alternative, they said they were, you know, in favor of it, but they thought it needed clarity, but apparently that was withdrawn. And uh, I, I didn't hear anything negative from any opposition, um, but it does allow, it allows, uh, you know, enlargement of the existing buildings that are, you know, existing nonconformities, but this would make them conforming because <laughs> they can do it without having to go before, uh, you know, the CBA. So, uh, and, and there was, we, they, they, they proposed some changes to the text this evening because there were, I thought there were some questions that, that may have been addressed. But so I guess the bigger question is, are we, do we like this idea starting with the, uh, the, the, the general, before we sort of dig into the details of the text, are, are, we, are, we, are we generally in favor of the concept of what they're trying to do, which is basically allow this stuff so they can do enlargements without having to go before the ZBA and try to get a variance, that they can do it basically as a right um, in accordance with the underlying R2 zone. Did I characterize that correctly, uh, Harry, do you think? Um, Mr. Chairman, Harris, can play it. No, it's sure, it's just a sort of a technical point on who's uh, participating. So just yeah. taking a look at the minutes and uh, Masma, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you were here unless you've been able to listen to the recording um, of the last meeting then um, you wouldn't be able to participate in deliberations. It would have to be Sharon, who was here last meeting. Um, yes, well, so we, I was not here for the last meeting. I did not listen to any recordings okay. Okay. on that. I just read uh, everything about um, the situation here. Um, yep. But I did miss that last meeting, correct. Okay. Right. But you could still do all the other, you know, this discussions, decisions on any of the other public hearing items are open tonight. Right. That's just fine. not this one. Okay. okay. That's fine. Okay. okay. Hey, uh, Chuck, and sure. thank you, Harry, for clarifying that. That's, uh, thanks for checking it. So Sharon, you're on. You were here last time, correct? Okay. <laughs> I hear you. Okay. So let's kind of go around. Joe Chadwick, what do you think? I think any group that is as diligently self-regulated um, as this organization um, should be entitled to have that degree of control over their uh, neighborhood. Um, I, I'm, I'm quite in support of it. Um, and I would hope that if there is a surviving um, um, PDD, that it gets taken out because we, we really don't need, um, you know, sort of zombie regulations to cause trouble later. But in, in, in short, I am in favor of it. Great. I can't I can't see a negative aspect to it, and I've never seen so much positive support. Chuck Anderson here. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Joe Vayuso. Yeah, Joe Vayuso. Yeah, I'm I'm a, a proof, proof of it as well. Yeah, they they uh, have their own rules and regulations, so they're they're handling it really well. I think plus to uh, get this. Uh, <clears throat> Make it easier for them to make the changes that they want to uh, make over time. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm in favor of it. Um, Chuck Ennis here. Thank you, Joe. Marcy. Yeah, I mean, essentially, you've already got the 35 homes there. They're not proposing anymore. So, you know, what we, would be the intent of the PDD? I think has effectively already played itself out, and you know, they've proven over many years that they're a self-governing community and you know just as any perhaps condo association with their own bylaws might be they've you know because they've regulated themselves over time with, with bylaws they just seemed organized and I don't think I I did, certainly didn't pick up on anything that seemed excessive or you know out of or it, I should say 
that seemed inconsistent with our R2 zoning that that would fall into. So I'm certainly in favor of it. Chuck and Sharon, thank you, Marcy. Sharon? Um, in favor of it as well. I think they've um, demonstrated that they have fairly strict regulations. And so I think they have done this in the past and should continue to do it in the future. So I'm in favor. Uh, Chuck Anders here, thank you. I'm also in favor, uh, I also favor the concept. I think it's, you, you ought to be able to do this without having to get a variance, <laughs> which, which is a fiction because in theory, the standard you get a variance, you have to show some, you can't make reasonable use of your property, whatever, it's, it's a fiction. And it's, you know, I, I, I think it's, you know, you shouldn't have to do that. And I, you know, I, it, it provides, it, it's, they, they meet the public health and safety stuff. They have, you know, the water acts in water. They're self-regulated, apparently have a good record. And even if they were to sell it to some outsider and come in, I think it's still limited, you know, of, of what we're doing. It simply allows buildings in conformance with the underlying zone, which kind of makes sense, I think so. So uh, I think we're all in favor of that. That brings, sort of brings then the technical questions. Are there, uh, any, and there was suggested a uh, text amendment, uh, amendment to the text this evening uh, that was proposed, uh, Evan and Harry. I, I, just a question to Evan and Harry, in terms of where this would be applicable, it, it, it would be basically Sunrise Cove and Lampier's Cove and maybe one other spot, is that correct? Or? Uh, yes, that is correct. There's a, a small parcel about, a half or a quarter mile north of the uh, Lampier's Cove Association that has four four individual cottages on one parcel. Uh, so I think that this would apply to that property as well. Okay. Um, okay, so that would uh, presumably allow those ones to be renovated in conformance with the underlying zone as well, I suppose. So, um, okay. Um, so then what about the technical stuff, Evan and Harry? Do yeah, you... Harry Smith, Town Planner. Um, one thing the, um, the, uh, the amendment proposed tonight does not clarify is in the use table, what should be the entry? Uh, would it be uh, um, permitted as of right or allowed by site plan. This would be sort of the use itself. So um, what is the approval process the commission really wants to see happen here? Uh, I thought he I thought he actually yeah. proposed. Harry, Jim actually sent me an email just before the meeting started and indicated that the original application did include, uh, um, I'll share my screen and show it. Well, I, I saw his email, but I'm not seeing what, what you'd enter in the table. There's an entry. In, that can be made in the table. So, right, I see that, yeah. But, but as what, as permitted, as site plan, or as special exception? No, I so mean that. Three, oh, three, all right, three. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Never mind, take it back. It's already listed in there as Sony permit required. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, thank you. I'm thinking the commercial table. Sorry right. to confuse everyone, okay. No problem. Um, any other, te what, what other issues uh, besides that, you know, that, so that would be as a zoning permit, I think. That right, so be treated just like a single family right. home that's being renovated or added to or whatever. Right. Yeah. So they wouldn't have to come to us unless it was a coastal. Correct. Or if it triggers a 6.8. Right. Yeah. Right, right. So what about the text itself? Um, the, 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 I, I, it's, it's really that third line, uh, that we talked about. So, so you made the change already there, um, Evan? Uh, this was actually sent over by the applicant and I just highlighted and underlined the changes that he made this afternoon after we spoke with him about the concern over the language, almost indicating that they would have to bring the entire site into conformance with the R2 zone. So if there was any structures within any setbacks um, or even less than 25 feet from the mean high watermark, something like that, 
would hinder the allowance of uh, replacement units being increased in height, coverage, or floor area. Okay. The, the one thought I, I'm reading that sentence then. So, and it says replacement units may be increased in height, coverage, and floor area so long as the entire site meets the coverage and floor area standards of the applicable zone. And, and so, and the applicable zone is the R2 zone here. And there are coverage and uh, floor area. So the what those limitations are, coverage uh, limitation is 25% uh, coverage. So that limits how much how big they could do. And then the floor area, that's the floor area ratio. That's how much building area, floor area compared to site area they could do. So those are limitations as to how big they could do it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The one thought I had is it says replacement units may be increased in height, coverage, and floor area, but it doesn't say increase how much. Do, you, do we need to say they be increased in conformance with the underlying zone? Do we need to add that? Because the next, when it talks about the applicable zone, it's only referring in the second part of the sentence to the coverage and floor area standards. So do we need to add that in the first part to show that what the limitations on height, the increase in height coverage and floor area of the individual units are? Uh, you know, it would certainly make it clear. I think it by default, that's what would apply anyways, would be my take, but I don't know, Evan, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think it would clarify the issue. So what words would we add there? That it would just replacement units may be increased in height, coverage, in floor area. In compliance with the underlying zoning district requirements. Yeah. Um, with the applicable zoning district requirements. I mean, it's not an underlying zone, really. So with the applicable zoning district requirements. Yeah, I agree with Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, that makes better sense. Okay, so that just clarifies that. So it's not unlimited height. It's okay. I think that was the intent. So we're not saying anything that wasn't intended. Um, okay. Any other thoughts or technical questions that anyone has? Things that we're to change or that are omitted or anything else? Harry and Evan, do you have anything else? Do you think it's? No, I don't. nothing right now. Okay. All right, do we want to vote on this? I mean, is there any reason not to? <laughs> Harry, can you think of anything? I can't off uh, the cuff. Um, like every other section of the zoning regulations, it's possible there's some, some permutation or application that we're missing, but that's the case with, you know, Many, many sections. So I think, you know, I, I think we're safe to go. Okay. Okay. Did everyone agree with that? I mean, I. Do we have to pick a certain date? Yeah. Yeah. We would yeah. have to, yeah. we'd have to make findings and pick a date, an effective date that would be after the publication. So I, yeah. I don't know what, what date do you uh, suggest? Um, the default is 16 days after, but to just to give ourselves a little more wiggle room. We could say about August uh, 12th. Give us another issue of the sound just in case we uh, miss okay. the deadline publishing it for some reason. Okay. So then the motion would be to uh, approve the application, adopt the text amendment as amended, which includes really a, the, the two sections of the regulations we're amending 3.3a, uh, subsection 2, and 3.5, the new section 3.5. So we're going to to adopt these uh, to approve the application and adopt the zoning text amendment as amended as set before, with the findings that it's consistent with the plan of conservation and development and the comprehensive plan, yep. and with an effective date of August 12, 2022. Someone wants to make that motion. Anybody? Shadwick will make that motion. 
Okay, Joe Chadwick makes a motion. Is there a second? Marcy seconds it. Marcy seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Chadwick, are you in favor? Chadwick is in favor. Joe Vayuso? Joe Vayuso in favor. Marcy? Marcy's in favor. Sharon? Sharon is in favor. And Chair is also in favor, so that's approved. Okay, then. So let's go then to item number two, which is 85 Sunset Beach uh, LLC. That was the special exception to sort of raise the house with the addition. And uh, Evan, maybe you can pull up your staff report with the suggested uh, findings and conditions on that one. Uh, yes, I can. Can everyone see it? Yes. Uh, check in to share. I can see it. You pulled up your staff report and it's displayed on the screen. So, um, and I think you probably reviewed it. So the, the finding is the consistency with the CAM st stuff and the language, the conditions regarding solar, the standard soil and erosion condition, and the uh, compliance with lighting insofar, I guess I would say, insofar it's applicable at all. But, uh, you know, they're you have to comply with it. Is there any you know, revisions or anything else that commission members or staff think to be made to this? If not, then does someone want to make a motion to approve the application uh, in accordance with the findings and conditions in the staff report as set forth in front of us? No, I use Sorry, Marcy Pelosi will move to approve as, as presented. Motion made by Marcy. Is there a second? Joe Bayuso seconds. Joe Bayuso seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Chadwick in favor? Chadwick is in favor. Joe Bayuso? Bayuso in favor. Marcy? Marcy's in favor. And Massimo, I think you're up for this one? Yep, Massimo's in favor. And Chair's also in favor. So that's, uh, that's passed. That brings us then to the third item, or the, it was really item number four on our agenda, which is uh, the daycare center, Joseph Barbaretta, 221 West Main Street, special section for the daycare center. And um, thanks for pulling that up. Uh, Evan, you wanna review with us the findings and conditions. I think there's a number of things that you, you know, in order to make sure they conform the regulations you've added as conditions, so. Uh, sure. Finding number one, based on the testimony and application material presented, the proposed use of the property is consistent with the special exception criteria of section 9.8. Uh, prior to the issuance of a certificate of zoning compliance or certificate of occupancy, the following shall be addressed to the satisfaction of the town planner or his designee. Item A, confirmation in writing that no changes to the existing exterior lighting uh, is proposed as part of the work associated with this approval. Um, also one change, as Harry pointed out before, uh, and condition one from should to shall. Um, back to item B, confirmation in writing that facility requirements for daycare as specified in the Connecticut Public Health Code not demonstrated on the submitted site plan entitled Site Plan CS Grow Child Care dated June 6, 2022. Uh, C, the applicant shall submit a letter from the East Shore Health District describing the safety and adequacy of the drinking water and sewage disposal system. Uh, D, the applicant shall submit a letter from the Brantford Fire Marshal descri describing any fire safety concerns. E, the applicant shall submit a letter from the Brantford Building Official describing any structural safety concerns. Uh, item F, confirmation that the existing parking spaces are adequate for combined uses on the property. Condition number two, to ensure continued compliance with the zoning regulations, all landscaping must be maintained in, as an ongoing requirement of this approval to ensure survival of the landscaping. Any landscaping element that does not survive or that becomes significantly damaged must be replaced in kind. And condition number three, all conditions of the previous approval shall remain in full force and effect as they still, as they may still apply. Chuck Andrews, Chair, thank you, Evan. Any, uh, 
questions, comments from anyone? Uh, if not, then if someone want to make a, a well, a discussion, I think, uh, are, are we in favor? I, I guess there's an existing daycare down there. They're going to move their location. You need to get a few things, but it sounds like, you know, the, the things that we're mostly concerned with the parking and so forth um, will, um, you know, that, that it works. Uh, and the, these other items are going to have to comply with whatever at some point. Uh, and they have to show verification before they can get their seat certificate of zoning compliance. So I'm, I'm okay with it. Any, anyone else have any thoughts or? Marcy Pelosi, seems very straightforward to me. Okay, okay then does someone want to make a motion to approve the application in accordance with the, uh, the staff report that was just read to us by uh, Evan? Joe Vallejo moves to approve. Motion made by Joe Vallejo. Is there a second? Massimo Ligori seconds. Second by Massimo. Further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Chadwick? Chadwick is in favor. Joe Vallejo? Vallejo in favor. Marcy? Marcy is in favor. Massimo? Massimo is in favor. And Chair is also in favor. That brings us then to old business and item number one of old business is the uh, Buckley Road, uh, item number one and two actually, the, uh, the Buckley Road special exception application for the open space residential development and the special exception for the grading. The, um, so that's the Monoe's building group was the applicant, John and Ann Hines owners, um, multiple owners, again, the Buckley Road application. So Harry, I understand you did uh, prepare a resolution. We had a discussion about that. And based on that discussion, Harry's prepared a resolution that I think he did send out to us. But uh, Harry, you want to review that with us? Sure. Um, Harry Smith, Town Planner. Um, just before I jump into that, uh, I just want to clarify. Um, um, the motion was with respect to the staff report as modified as Evan described. So, which I think he's. I think he's saving it as we speak. Um, right. So there you go. Whoops, forgot I had my screen. That's okay. Sorry, everybody. It's okay. It actually clarified everything, so that's great. Yeah. Um, that's correct. So yes, I sent everyone, hopefully everyone got it. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get out in the packet on Friday. Um, since I sent the proposed um, findings and conditions, I've modified things a bit. So I'm gonna share my screen and just run through a modified version um, of that. Do we, do we know who's voting on this one? Um, Sharon, I think you were here at all the meetings. Um, and I don't know, Mazimo, if you were or were not. There were several of them. But I'm pretty sure uh, Sharon was here for every meeting since this started. Is that? Yeah, um, okay. I have been. Okay. And Mazimo, I, I, does that... So unless you guys um, discussed anything about this application um, two weeks ago, I'm pretty yeah. sure I was here for every meeting. You were? Okay. So, I mean, I think Mazimo is up um, as your, it's frankly your turn to vote. So once, if you said that you've been to all the meetings and heard everything, then. I'm, I'm pretty positive I have. I think you're in the slot. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so with that, um, let me just run through this, um, as I've indicated here, anything in, in sort of pink highlighting I've added since the memo that you received in email, or we did actually mail a copy of that out as well. Um, but anything that is highlighted, essentially items that I was a little, um, unclear on what exactly the consensus might be of the commission. So I, just wanted to highlight those or there was something that was a little, um, um, you know, specific to this application that was not a standard type of, of condition, if you will. Um, so I did add in here a reference in the finding to the letter from uh, town council, William Maniscovich regarding uh, applicability of the section concerning interior lots. That's in the record of the application. So that's there. <clears throat> um, the other findings just to highlight them very quickly. Um, in number one, um, also referred to an offer made by the applicant. Um, 
at I believe the last session of the public hearing on June 2nd, I believe it was, um, for a financial contribution of approximately $1,500 for dwelling unit towards development of maintenance of a trail and proposed open space. Um, And basically also a reference to the statement uh, from the Brave to Lane Trust that we, excuse me, I had preliminary interest in acquiring the open space and the coastal site plan application, all the other um, additional testimony materials and so forth. Um, also made a finding the commission could adopt with respect to the uh, evidence presented by Robert Sharnison of PE. Um, and basically saying there was uh, no contradictory evidence presented by an equally qualified individual um, and saying that based on the testimony documentation provided by Mr. Shaughnessy, uh, the commission is uh, uh, accepting the uh, uh, definition of the mean high water as 0.88 feet um, North American vertical datum, I believe is that what that stands for. Um, Finding three um, <clears throat> would provide for the commission to find the transfer of the proposed open space to the Brantford Land Trust is the preferred method of disposition of the open space. This would be given the Brantford Land Trust ownership of money land to the south of this property. So it'd be contiguously owned with other land they already own. Um, and then the standard coastal site plan finding. So proposed conditions, number one is standard condition, just reference that all construction substantially conform to the documents included with the uh, application. And number two um, is a condition that required before any construction activities, sedimentation and erosion controls installed in a pre-construction meeting. Um, number three I've added in here, which we've used in other applications, would require should there be blasting on the site, that there would be a, a pre-blast survey offer made to owners of all structures, any part of which is within 100 feet of the area of the property that is going to be cleared. Um, so that would not include the open space being proposed. Um, and this would also limit any blasting Monday to Friday, nine to five. Um, number four is a list of several things that would need to be done before the issuance of a zoning permit or a zoning sign off on a building permit. Uh, the first would be field staking of the proposed boundaries of the proposed open space. Uh, this was a, a comment made by the Brantford Land Trust. Um, this would specifically include um, where the open space intersects the uh, old trolley berm running through it. Um, and the second sentence here would provide for the services of David Sacco, who's the PE on the applicant's team to design the stormwater system to uh, provide sufficient time um, defaulting to my determination um, to explain the proposed stormwater drainage system and any impact it may have on the proposed open space um, to the Brantford Land Trust or any other entity that commission um, approves to accept the open space. This was a follow from a comment made by the, um, the land trust. Uh, they wanted, I think, a better understanding of what potential impact the drainage might have on the open space. Um, so hopefully that would clear that up, provide an opportunity for discussion. Um, B would be um, documentation to my satisfaction that the land trust will accept the proposed open space or the approval by the commission of an alternative method, which would potentially be a homeowners association or possibly even the town. Um, I did want to spell out here that at this point, um, I, you know, you can adopt this or not, but that I want to be clear that um, should the proposal be for homeless association, I think there would be a need to be more information supplied, uh, specifically a proposed maintenance plan for the open space, how the homeowner association would be, would be set up, what its financial resources would be, and any further information the commission deem necessary uh, and it's uh, consideration of, of uh, whether it should accept um, the homeowners association acquiring the open space. <clears throat> I also proposed here, um, I was, it didn't seem completely clear to me that the commission 
um, felt it necessary to require that the open space include the development of a trail. There was a lot of uh, testimony about um, trying to establish a trail and getting a trail out to the berm, which is above the mean height of water, water line and above the tidal wetland. But it seemed unclear in the testimony provided how that would be accomplished, whether we need a boardwalk, whether it was upland um, available to connect any trail from the developed portion of the site to the berm. You know, my reading of the plans, I did not see where that was the case. It seemed that the berm that you would want to, there would be an area where you would need to crush tidal marsh potentially with a boardwalk to stay on the applicant's property and the open space property. Um, so I've proposed this for the commission to consider, um, basically saying that the ownership of the open space parcel would include an obligation to allow public access should a suitable trail be established. Um, and going on to say that, however, the approval does not obligate the land trust or any other entity approved by the commission to accept the open space to develop a trail across any inland or tidal wetland on the open space property or maintain any such trail that is developed. So it leaves it open so that in the future, the land trust or other entity could establish a trail or not, um, depending on availability resources, um, what it might connect to um, and so forth. But that, you know, if that all worked out, then the public would have to be allowed to use the trip. So I don't know if you want to talk about any of these as I'm going through them or you just want me to keep going on. I mean, that's frankly, to me, something the commission might want to uh, discuss briefly. So I was a little unsure of it, but maybe uh, there is clarity already. Um, okay, we may as well break break this. So the, the the issue here, I think, was that you know the the DEP letters, in, you know, finding consistency with the Coastal Area Management Act was, I think, premised on oh, there's going to be open space for the public. That that, that said, it, it, it's not fully clear just based on the conditions whether it's going to happen, um, and what, whether who owns it, whether it's land trust or anyone else, I, I think that was also clear. Um, what we, what the applicant, they offered to make a donation and we're requiring that as part of this. I think it's $18,000, it's based on $1,500 per unit. So it's $18,000. I have some level of confidence that if it's a Branford land trust that they will, you know, that's what they do. They've done it for lots of their properties. If it is feasible, that they would try to make it open to the public. So I. I have some confidence that that's that's why I, I preferred the land trust over homeowners association or some other. Thing. So so I I'm comfortable with the way Harry has phrased this, which is that you know if it is you know in the first sentence it does say you know it should allow public access if, if that is built, but it doesn't mandate that it be built because frankly I don't think they're there. So I'm I'm okay with this. Others. <clears throat> Uh, Chadwick speaking. Um, open space does not necessarily have to be habitable to be beneficial. So the fact that you have open space is primarily you know, the important thing. I'm always looking for a new place to take my dog and get ticks, but um, you don't need to have the space be occupied by people. I mean, it's it it one of the major. Um, observations of of the neighbors was how random nature tends to occur and, and creatures tend to habitate places. So this whether whether people are there or not, nature will habitate it and it will it will be a good thing. So I, I think as written it's fine. I don't think we need to really make any stronger direction. Chuck in is here. Thanks Joe. Any other comments or thoughts by anyone? Joe Values, I agree with all that. Thanks, Joe. Marcy? Um, I would echo uh, Joe Chadwick that uh, open space doesn't need to be access, that all open space doesn't necessarily have to be accessible. I think sometimes it's better left not accessible if it's sensitive so that um, you know we don't trample upon it too much. Um, 
but you know, it seems fine as written. Great. Thanks, Marcy. Um, Massimo. Yeah, I, um, I'm in agreement with, uh, with what everyone is saying. I think that actually there should be, you know, some areas, uh, just left to nature, you know, um, you know, let the birds and, and the bugs and everybody else kind of enjoy their little space. And, uh, it doesn't have to be, um, <clears throat> you know, not everything has to be taken by, by us and put trails in and disturb regular nature. So I'm okay with it. Um, you know, either way, but, um, but it makes sense just keeping it natural. Great. Uh, check in your chair. Great. Thank you, Massimo. So I think we're good with that. And I'll just say one additional thing. I agree with everyone's sentiment. Actually, there's probably some open space that should be ruled off. Humans should not inhabit uh, or should not go to because you disturb, you know, the vegetation. And we know there's certain nesting habitats. They don't like people to go to and that sort of thing. The reason I was kind of emphasizing it is, is it's, it's more of a technical issue that the DEEP in order to find that it's consistent with the Coastal Area Management Act, you have to have a public access, access component, and that changes a non-water dependent use to a water dependent use because the open space sort of fulfills it. They sort of made that logic. And so I'm trying to do this and, you know, complying with the spirit of the DEP, you know, uh, recommend, letter and support acknowledging that. So and anyway, Harry, I think we're all okay with that so we can uh, move on. Okay. Um, I mean, I just would note that uh, I'll get down here. Maybe we'll tweak the wording a little bit. I mean, there is a proposed trail from, well, will be from Buckley Road extension, the private road to the edge of the tidal wetland, which frankly provide would provide access to the coastal resource, um, even though basically you're coming down to a line of trees and you're looking about some water under the trees, it's still public access to the shore, yeah. technically. <laughs> so well, it does you know, get around that water dependent use thing, okay, how useful, viable it is without a trail through it. You know, even if you got a trail to the, the berm, the berm ends in private property and you would need, you know, some other kind of probably boardwalk connection over to the east to try and get over near the base of the landfill so you could potentially connect up to some other, you know, developed open space, if you will, where there's access. Um, but we'll keep going and I'll point out the, I put a provision for a, uh, an easement along Buckley Road and the trail to the edge of the open space. Okay. Um, okay, uh, C is, um, this is a little detail on the current plan. Um, there is a note that there's a small knoll of uh, rock outcrop um, butting up against the Brightwood uh, Road backyards. And part of that is to be removed, not the whole thing. If you stick with the duplex plan you saw at the last meeting. Um, so on that plan, there is a note that says you could have a rock slope. However, um, there's a requirement in the regulations that that be a, you know, affirmatively approved by the commission. Maybe some more information supplied and we've had some issues with rock slopes, frankly, in several of the past applications, whether, and we haven't had a lot of information and sometimes, for example, Sterling Ridge had to go back and approve some alternative to the rock slope, like a retaining wall. Um, and there also is a note on the big knoll that they would try to, you know, if it was stable enough, they would do a rock slope. I think they would need to come back in my mind to the commission and say, okay, we've excavated, the rock is stable. Can you approve a rock slope to move the retaining wall? Then the commission can say yes or no based on some more information. So you know what you're getting. Um, so that can see uh, concerns all that. Um, so, and, and Harry, just to clarify, because one of the things you talked about is, do we want the duplex option or the single family? And I think yep, yep. the census was single family. And so this one, this note is is consistent with the single family option. Is that correct? Um, it would be consistent with it with respect to the big knoll. I think with the small knoll for the single family option, that whole little knoll is coming down near Brightwood. Right. But the larger one, as you come into the property on the left, um, 
I can't remember the other name of the road. I think it's Evergreen, maybe something else, um, would have to come partially down. And that is proposed to have a retaining wall at this point. But once they go in and do the excavation, they might find solid rock, in which case they could come back to the commission and say, look, we got the rock. Can you let us just have the solid rock wall? And the commission could say yes. Okay. Yeah, that would be a possible scenario. Um, D has to do with just making sure the fill meets the requirements of the regulation, no stumps, no logs, no uh, construction debris, uh, compostable material, that kind of thing. Um, so we just get some documentation that the fill is clean that was brought in. Um, e um, would require the uh, maintenance plan that was discussed during the public hearing. I think at the last session it was noted that, um, or maybe it was after the close of the hearing, so I might be sure to say, but we did not receive the maintenance plan. Um, this would provide for a review of that by myself and uh, as assisted by the town engineer or the staff about how the homeowner association will maintain the roadway, the stormwater drain system, including the swale along Brightwood, backyard properties, landscaping, et cetera. Um, I would expect that, um, just to put it on the record a little bit, um, the applicant made a suggestion of, um, of having the maintenance plan enshrined in the provisions setting up the common interest community. And I would expect part of the maintenance plan approval to require uh, that or any other measure to make sure that that maintenance plan is implemented and clear to the homeowners association. Um, even though it's not spelled out here in the condition. Um, the next one has to do with uh, landscaping plan modifications. Um, I would require that the plan be reevaluated, incorporate native species as much as possible. Um, Roman numeral two would be uh, getting some more information on the spacing between the plantings. This is particularly uh, along the perimeter of the property uh, where they propose for screening. Um, it's not clear what the space is going to be. You want to make sure they're placed close enough to fill in, but not so close that they're crowding each other. Um, and uh, Roman numeral three would require um, tree protection zones and tree protection measures for existing trees and other vegetation. Uh, and Roman numeral four would require significant trees to be individually identified. This is only within the area to be disturbed and the sheet reference should be changed to drawing five. Apologize for that. Um, And the last one here in pink would um, require the uh, trail, which doesn't currently show on the plan as continuing all the way to Buckley Road to come right at the, to the pave, edge of pavement of the proposed extension of Buckley Road. And then it goes down to the proposed open space. And it's basically proposed as a footpath. Um, G would require um, appropriate screening be added to the site plans with all ground monitored HVAC utility equipment and so forth. Um, and H um, will require a little bit more information requirements on lighting. Um, I think this is what they're proposing already that it's just not indicated on that one particular drawing that the uh, pole mounted light in the fixture would be no higher than 12 feet to keep the pedestrian scale. Um, and that the building mounted lights be no higher than nine feet above grade, again, keep it lower. Um, and then Roman numeral three is kind of standard condition about cutoff and um, fixed mounts and uh, keeping it to less than 3000 degrees Kelvin to keep it sort of not the blue white light that's been you know previously provided commission as something that's kind of a potential health problem. Um, and again, um, the sheet reference should be again fixed to um, 13, not LP1. Should be drawing 13. So both references and H should be the drawing 13. 
And then I um, requires no storage area to be shown. Jay would um, require screening of any feature not referred to in, um, I think it's G above, um, such as if they have any kind of uh, dumpster location added here, if it's not gonna be individual canisters or something like that, that would be screened um, from the view of bunny property owners of the public. Um, K will require evidence of a sewer use agreement, finalization of any design aspects of the proposed connection of the town's um, uh, sanitary sewer system. Um, L would require uh, approval, of, evidence approval connection to the buildings to public water. Uh, M, so an erosion control bond. And, and I made this um, yellow and pink because um, I should have highlighted it um, in the original memo, but I did not. Um, this is where the, and this is my understanding of the consensus commission, you want the single family plan, not the duplexes, though there were some comments, I think. In support of the duplexes, this is what I put in based on my understanding of the consensus. So you can tell me here um, or afterwards, um, if I keep going, um, if this is truly reflective of where the commission wants to go with it. You want to stop here? You want me to keep rolling on? Uh, you mean just the question about the uh, duplexes versus single family? Right. Yeah. Sure. Let's let's do the poll here. I think we did. I think that was my recollection of the consensus uh, during our discussion. Joe Chadwick. Uh, Chadwick was in favor of the duplexes, um, mm -hmm. just for the sake of the site arrangement. Okay. Chadwick like the duplexes. Joe Bayuso. Joe Bayuso changes his mind. Goes, I'm going to go to duplexes, like uh, Joe Chadwick just said. Oh, okay. Uh, Marcy. Okay. Marcy still with the single family. Massimo. Massimo um, is going to go with the single family. Um, I believe that that area is pretty much all single family. Just putting in one duplex there sort of diminishes his, that that whole site. Uh, so I, I would say single okay yeah um so it's two two so what i <laughs> i i will uh probably go with a single family and it's more deference to it seeing what the neighbors uh, prefer the immediate butters seem to say with the preferred you know the, the, they like the other alternative and there was some general sentiment so so what that means is some slight more disturbance to the area. I get that, but I think uh, I'm going with that. So there we go. Okay. All right. So um, I called that, prognosticated that correctly, I guess. Um, o and P have to do with, uh, you may all recall that I think in the last part of the public hearing, um, the uh, applicant's engineer proposed a supplementary drainage pipe system that would um, provide for three yard drains um, at the edge of the backyards of the Brightwood properties abutting the development. Um, so provide some additional drainage from them because it was impossible with the design to get their drainage into the drainage swale um, because of the flat grades it was it could not be dropped low enough and still make the run out down near the tidal marsh. Um, when that was presented, I think at least one or two member, you know, property owners affected on Brightwood said, no, we don't want that because that would um, require more vegetation to be removed, which is our buffer to this, you know, new development. Um, so what I came up with was some proposed requirements. Um, o would require the applicant to do a, in a large scale drawing showing um, to the best of their ability, what existing vegetation would need to be removed. So it's clearer what might need to happen to put this piping system in place. P would require um, each of those abutting property owners, uh, those immediately adjacent to the proposed supplemental drainage to get a notice and a copy of this in large scale plan um, saying they should contact the planning and zoning department if they do not wish the portion of the proposed supplemental system 
adjacent that property to be constructed. Um, you know, I put in some time frames. I, I initially put in 30 days for the commission to get comments back and, and decide. Um, that might be something maybe you want a little more time. Maybe you want to put a deadline for the applicant, the excuse me, the uh, those property owners, homeowners along Brightwood to get to the planning and zoning department with any comments they have. I've already heard from one, frankly, during the hearing, did not want it. Um, you know, whether this could be sliced up where you only do part of it or you don't do any of it or you do all of it, those would be that would be the result of this process. Um, Harry, Joe Chadwick speaking. Yeah, it's um, cumbersome. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> I think you say that right. I well, you're. I don't know why you're doing this to yourself, but it's. Um, <laughs> Trying to respond I, to. Well, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, but high density polyethylene HDPE needs an object following it. Connecting oh, it should be pipe. The pipe. Pipe. I Whether it's pipes or pipe. structures, yep. I, I wasn't sure pipe. what it was yep. that was. What I was left after the word that. Up. Thank you for that. Thank you. And. Required in condition three point E above. Um, I read condition three point E, and I'm not sure. No, no, no. It should be O. Okay. It slid in several others too. So thank you for that. Also, it should be four O. So we got pipe after H D P E in parentheses. I was H. having flashbacks of programming in Fortran. Oh, I've done that myself. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a pleasant experience. People um, of a certain generation would understand that. Yeah. So it would be condition P would be condition 4O. And then we could figure out the dates. If, you know, I mean, I, I don't know any other way to resolve this, though I was hoping I could come up with something other than this sort of cumbersome approach. Because I'm not clear that all those homeowners don't want this, so there may be the result might be part of it gets built. I don't know. I certainly didn't want the applicant to be put in the position of having to build this thing they proposed, and then several people really don't want it, and you know everyone's unhappy about the outcome. Harry, I, 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 it's cumbersome, but I think it's good. It allows neighbor input after the close of the process, and it's sort of, you know. Yeah, it leaves it out. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 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 I know you need a blank for the days. And I don't yep. know. You you had 30, it could be 60. I don't know what you want, but but we should put something in, I guess. Yeah, I, I would think okay. so. I mean, maybe you could do 30 for getting back to the commission to the uh, planning and zoning department and give the commission 60 days or something. That would you know, assuming people jump right on this, that would give us some time into the fall, just in case they do that. Yeah. Um, okay, um, I guess I could do, um, I'm not going to do Evan's approach because I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> um, so number five would be things that need to be done before a certificate of occupancy, um, authorization by the zoning officer, or a certificate of zoning compliance. Um, these are pretty typical, completion of all site work, final as built. Um, C would provide for evidence recording of the proposed conservation easement to the town. I understand the town administration is amenable to taking the conservation easement. Uh, this is sort of a belt and suspenders approach that's required by the regulations when um, a group such as the land trust um, becomes owners of open space, just to be sure that you know, it's covered that the open space would be conserved. Um, so this would require the recording of the conservation easement and the deed transferring ownership of the open space to the land trust or alternative entity. Um, I proposed adding in here at the end, um, such deed would include the legal right to uh, add the standard CTDEP coastal public access signage at the intersection of Buckley Road and Arc Road as you're getting, you know, beginning of the development as well as the beginning of the trail as you're coming off that paved extension of Buckley Road towards the gazebo and down what trail might be developed at such time as the trail may be established. So not until. D um, discusses the contribution of the $18,000 
um, towards the maintenance, the open space and any potential trail developed on it. Contribution I put down here, I just proposed this. This comes from nowhere out of my head and there could be a much better way to do it, but I just wanted the opportunity for um, some parameters around this. So I proposed um, it be deposited into a fund to be controlled by the entity receiving the open space any costs of developing the structure of the fund, the legal documents, et cetera, that would be the responsibility of the applicant, the owner, and the form and content of those documents or whatever will be submitted to town council, myself, potential to commission, review and approval prior to the contribution being made. And again, making sure the contribution is made in a manner acceptable you know, legally and um, you know, an appropriate way to make sure it's there to accomplish the purpose it's intended for. Um, so that's the wording I came up with. Uh, hopefully that fits the bill, but if anybody has any suggestions, um, I'm more than happy to tweak this up. Um, and E would provide for evidence and recording of an easement. Um, again, form of content acceptable town council, town planner commission for access to and use by, use by the land trust or any other entity receiving these open space, as well as members of the public, um, as pedestrians along the pathway shown on that drawing in the plan um, and along Buckley Road. So with this easement in place, a member of the public could walk from Arc Road through the development, down this easement, down the path, essentially to the tidal wetland. So you essentially theoretically have public access to coastal resources. So I think in my mind that could be conceived as technically dealing with a water dependent use issue. Even though if there's no trail, you're not going anywhere um, once you get down to the tidal well. Um, there was a comment by the uh, engineering office on their comments saying that the, you know, want to emphasize the Buckley Road is a currently a private road and it's not approved to become a public road. Um, so I just want to clarify that it should be added on all the drawings. Um, the commission is not approving Buckley Road becoming a public road, though it doesn't rule out that possibly being done in the future should it be built to town standards. And though I think there's three feet of uh, right of way missing from the 50 feet, one of the abutting property owners. So that's been an obstacle in the past and could remain so. Um, G would require reconfiguration of the open space. Um, there is a little a piece of the stormwater piping system um, from the supplemental drainage that goes into the proposed open space. I'm pretty sure the land trust does not want anything to do with any part of the stormwater drainage system. Probably any other entity owning it outside of the homeowners association uh, would be equally leery of that. So this would provide for the open space boundary to be tweaked a little bit just to get that pipe out of the open space. And, and Harry, G, I think any any portion you need a space in a... In, in a yeah, yeah, there's a missing space there. Thank you. Yeah, and, a, and, a, and the O after the I. Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, um, H would require, there's a couple of different properties involved here require the merger. Um, I it should be in the event, not event, event that blasting has taken place, uh, required offer of a post-blast survey to the owners or everyone who got the pre-blast survey, basically. Um, again, standard condition number six, uh, dust issues, zoning officer required that be dealt with. Uh, seven is a standard condition about any new signage replaceable lighting, need to get approval. Um, eight, um, requiring landscaping to be maintained, ongoing department approval, standard condition. Um, a nine would require maintenance and improvement shown on the arise approved plans. It's, that's an ongoing requirement of the approval and implementation of the maintenance plan. Um, 10, standard condition requiring any modifications to the, any of the elements of the approved documents. It shall require further approval as provided for by the regulations. I is uh, getting to be a standard condition. This was proposed by the town engineer. We've included it in a couple other applications um, and it helps with our uh, general permit um, and ability to um, 
being applied to the national MPDS, national, I can't remember exactly what it stands for, but it's basically our permit with the state about stormwater discharge. Um, and I put in here that the reporting period every two years starting at the issuance of the last C, uh, CO. And then 12, suggesting this condition, um, assuming that there'll be potentially commercial trash um, haulers taking the garbage from this development, that this would limit that so it's not happening um, overnight as it does in my neighborhood um, or anytime on Sundays, which does not happen in my neighborhood. Um, but this would be deference to the neighbors. So for the commission's consideration, that's what I've got. Chair Kanish here, thank you, Harry. Yeah, Harry, just a quick <clears throat> question. By sure. a private firm not under contract with the town, what does that yeah. have to do with anything? Uh, well, the town's um, waste, there is a private firm under contract with the town that does that service. So Correct. it's not town employees. Understood. Yeah, so this would be, if the town's doing it, then they didn't want to put the condition and the commission in the position of telling the town's contractor how to remove trash. But if but it's it a private a hauler doing it, it's not but, contracting with the town. Well, if, that was if the if idea. Okay, if it's the town's hauler, and yep. I, I really have like no dog in this fight except for the fact that um, the, the precedence in the language just struck me as odd. It would be a separate agreement with that company. So that's what I was trying to get away from. So that example, like the, the con contractor has a schedule and on Arc Road, they're coming in at five in the morning. Well, I didn't want this condition to screw up that whole schedule. If that's the way the town's decided to, you know, take the trash away, that's what's going to have to happen. And, but if it's a private firm that's not working with the town and the town's taking trash away at eight in the morning, um, yeah, I wanted to prevent a private firm not contracted with the town from doing it at three in the morning and waking everybody up unnecessarily. What, what was this? In, was this raised during the public hearing? Was there just? Uh, I think there was some comments about general impacts of the development. I mean, a couple of times the commissions put in something like this, um, but you haven't done it very often. So I threw it in here for discussion. Sure. Take it out, leave it in at your pleasure, of course. Okay, what do you guys think? Joe Chadwick, what do you think? Uh, Joe Chadwick thinks that we're, we're sort of hinging, t tipping deeply <laughs> over the edge of overregulation. Um, okay. I, I, I sleep well through the trash being taken out in, in the middle of the night. And I'm actually grateful when it's taken out in the middle of the night so I'm not having to figure out how I'm gonna get out of my driveway to miss <laughs> the recycling truck and the garbage truck. So, um, you know, it's, it's no matter what you do, having a slow moving vehicle in the middle of a street is gonna inconvenience somebody for some reason at some time. And it's like one day a week. So it's, it's, it's not like that, that's, that's a, you know, I, I don't sit there and cry in my truck waiting for the, for the garbage guy to go by. Fair enough. Joe Viuzo, thoughts? Uh, I, I think I think Harry, what you're saying, and I, I could be wrong, but in my mind, I'm thinking of uh, during construction with the with the roll off containers, not not picking up trash from homeowners. I'm thinking I'm thinking you're talking about just uh, roll offs, you know, that drop off one and empty and pick mm -hmm. up or pick up. No, I was really thinking day to day, yeah, and thinking, you know, sometimes develop. I don't think this is what's going to happen here, but they really haven't said um, whether they would have a few dumpsters on the property. I mean, it is up to the homeowners association to decide and manage how they're going to do it. Um, I would imagine they probably would think about what's the cheaper way to do it. Um, I don't think town trash haulers would go down a private road, but I might be incorrect on that, but I don't think they do. If you're 
if you're if you're if you're talking about during the 12 houses that get constructed during that time with with these containers, I, I, I agree with that. But the other part, I think the the homeowners or the uh, condo association people will, will set up their own standards if they have complaints. Okay. Uh, during the I agree that, that, that that's what you're talking about. Okay. Okay, Marcy. Hi, sorry about that. I tend to agree with uh, Joe Chadwick that we're getting into a lot of overregulation. I mean, if I were on the homeowner association, I would seek out to perhaps, you know, set up a contract with the town's company so that there are some efficiencies and maybe they would reduce the price. But, you know, if that road is too narrow, the company's going to have to send out a separate truck anyway, which is going to disrupt the schedule. So, but, you know, yeah, it would be nice to have this pickup done in concert with all the other, you know, pickups in that area at the same time. But I don't think that's for us to speak to. Okay. Massimo? I feel very similar. I don't think uh, we should make it our problem. Um, I think that, um, that we should just leave it up to their association. They can worry about it. Okay, yeah, it sounds like consensus. Just take it out here. Okay, I'm gonna try and go back and um, see if I can pick up some of these little changes that we kind of made. You gonna do your Evan inv invitation? I'm trying, I'm trying here to, not as efficiently as Evan. Um, so I caught the event, let's see. Yeah, I think Joe Chadwick had some changes to the numbers. Yeah, yeah. So that was coming up. Uh, I think this was fine. The deed. Um, I think we we're going to say here yeah, 30. We'll okay. Let's make it out. Make this 60. Pipe. And this one is four O. That's right. No, is it right? This is four. Okay. It's four. Sorry, this is taking a while. There are a lot of words. <laughs> I think I'm missing a couple of references to drawings and sheets. There we go. I should be drawing five. And I think the lighting condition had wrong sheet. So it should be. Uh, 
certainly not as good at this as Evan. <laughs> Hey, while you're doing that, can I, uh, can I quickly bring something up? On oh, please do. Yeah, guys, please do. You guys are going to probably want to kill me on this. Um, you know, going backwards on, on, uh, uh, you know, on this project. But on item number four, when um, it was my, to my recollection that, uh, that they wanted to put uh, the basins in there uh, for the same storm drains over there um, by... Brightwood to satisfy the neighbors. I don't think it was something that uh, the applicant um, has to do. I think you wanted to do it just to sort of um, help with the existing flooding problems over on Brightwood. Um, and then the neighbors sort of disapproved. Uh, they liked the vegetation better. Um, I'm thinking instead of going back and forth with bringing neighbors involved again, if the neighbors didn't want it, it's something that the applicant really didn't have to do that he wanted to do out of, you know, um, kindness. Um, maybe we should just kind of reevaluate that and say, maybe he doesn't just have to put those basins in and leave the natural vegetation as is. And instead of going back and forth and continuing this matter, getting neighbors involved after building is going on, I think it could create a problem. And time an effort from the town. In Masmo, it's Marcy. Yes. I, I wanna I wanna agree with you on that because one of the things that I think is very common is you know lay people don't know how to read a plan and don't understand you know the way water is flowing over contours and the you know and the actual grading. And I looked very, very closely at that grading. And the way they graded it into the swale is gonna, in my opinion, relieve all if you know most if not all of the water problem in those couple of lots so i don't think that we i don't see a need to to do more than what they've proposed i mean if you want to put a pipe in the swale and, and pipe it that's one thing but i i certainly don't i i think that the neighbors can't fully appreciate how much their water is going to be corrected by this project and you know, I would have liked to have seen maybe a cross section through so that they could maybe see the, what the, the change was. But, um, you know, that, that's been my sense all along. So I'm not sure why we're overcomplicating the process. I think the, uh, neighbor, the, the yeah. main neighbors in question didn't want it. I'm not sure what other neighbors it affects that really need to get in there. Right. You know, and the applicant did it. Was for the vegetation to stay. Hmm. Yeah, I thought you were going to yell at me, Marcy, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, Harry, how do we have this set up? What, what conditions address that? Well, uh, she would be on the screen here. This is O&P of condition four. Um, you know, I was clearly, um, I think one of the neighbors was clear they did not want it. They did not want the vegetation removed to get a yard drain on their property. I wasn't clear about the other two, frankly. I did not get that they, somebody said, I, I don't recall without having to listen to everything all over again, but I don't remember that unless everyone else is clear about that. That's why I went through this complicated thing, which frankly, I didn't want to write up, but I, I really wasn't clear. Uh, you know, we were out of time, we're kind of up against it. And this thing was just sort of hanging out there because frankly, to give the applicant credit, I think they were trying to address as much as humanly possible, the issue that was raised. Um, well, and, and does this allow any neighbor who wants to to say no, essentially? Yeah, basically allows them to, well, it's up to the commission. So it puts the commission yeah, yeah, in the yeah. driver's seat, but they basically say, look, I don't want it. I don't want it. And all three of them come back and say, we don't want it. Then the commission's going to have, you know, now right. if the first person closest to the discharge wants it, you could get rid of two thirds of it that extends further back out away from the tidal marsh that's a possibility but i don't know if that's the case i mean i, I mean i think you know probably masimo and, and marcy are right that they don't really want it when it's going to be a trade-off between taking out existing vegetation and yeah I, marcy again i think you're right they may not clearly understand but you know about the how much impact positively hopefully um that 
all the improvements proposed, including the swale and everything else, the redirection of stormwater will have. But I'm not a PE. Um, you know, none of us are PEs. So um, I'm uncomfortable doing that personally as staff. But I mean, you tell me what you want to do. Um, we can clearly say it's not needed, but. Hey, it's Marcy again. Yep. You know, as I recall, all three of those neighbors in questions were very involved in the process. And I think if they wanted it, they would have spoken up at the time of the public hearing. And the one, you know, and the one was very specific to say that they didn't and that they wanted to save the trees. So I think that was two yep. of the three neighbors. So I, I really think we're overcomplicating it and can just let the plan stand the way it is. Well, it would not stand the way it is. Actually, you probably would want to require the removal of that because the latest version of the plan shows that um, or a supplementary drainage line on the plan. So you'd have to have a condition here. We have to change this around and say that um, commission's directing that be taken off the plan. Well, I mean, the, the supplemental drainage line should not have it should not impact the offsite trees or grading. That that was the decision. You know, that was the, what I took away from the meeting that you know what. It, whatever happened, they didn't want work being done in their yards or any trees being removed. So well, right, right. But there would be trees probably. Or not. I mean, that I don't mind the pipe being in there, but I think it, bringing in the neighbors is, is excessive. Well, well I don't uh, think it would, go ahead. I'm so sorry. So just let me intervene just for one second. And just to simplify everything, it was, I, I'm, I'm pretty positive that the applicant added that extra drainage system onto the existing drainage system just to sort of make the neighbors over there happier. It wasn't a necessity. It probably, you know, the way that they had that drainage system, like you said, we're not these, but was, was what we require by law and what would help and not flood those neighbors actually help their drainage system. This was just something added on that that the applicant just you know felt that maybe they would he would relieve those neighbors from more anxiety, but I don't think it was necessary. Right. And then the, then the neighbors were like, "I'd rather have the tree buffer." Yeah, I, I mean, I I say let's remove that. I think we'll make the applicant very happy, and I think we'll make the neighbors very happy. And it, nothing to be complicated. We make that decision now. Keep it simple. Um, but, you know, you guys tell me what you think. Well, well let me make one comment, though. Um, you know, what I got out of the whole presentation about the drainage was that um, they were addressing the stormwater drainage from the applicant's property. And then they heard a lot of comments about existing issues and problems in the backyards of the Brightwood properties. And then they took this extra step at the, frankly, request of some of the commission members what can you do was the question. Can you do anything to help? And in response to that, they came back with a supplemental drainage piping yard drain thing, which Mr. Sacco said would, in his estimation, provide some additional drainage for those backyards. Um, is it necessary to deal with the stormwater drainage on the applicant's property? I think he went as on my recollection as he said on the record, no, but, is it potentially beneficial? Possibly. And to me, then it's a trade-off. You know, what are the, I mean, one of the property owners clearly does not want to lose trees if that's what needs to happen to get the yard drain on his property. So that's what I got out of it. Just clarify, you know, that just for my own purposes of saying, you know, that's what I remember. I don't know what everyone else remembers, but that's what I remember. Uh, Joe Vayuso. If I remember correctly, one of the homeowners was was against it because yep. if the pipe was installed, they they'd have to be on the, on their property as well and disturb their property to put that pipe in. They were going to do more damage uh, there by installing the pipe than if you just left it alone and, and just swale it and let it pitch on its own the, the way you want it to instead of putting a pipe. If I yep. remember yep. correctly, yep. there was definitely one person who came right out and said, "I don't want it." But I don't think any of the yard drains were actually on the Brightwood properties. They were pretty close, but they weren't on it, I don't think. Well, I don't know. All I, I remember something about 
it was going to cause a, 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 yeah. a, a installation of that pipe was going to have to they're going to have to go off their property line onto the neighbor's property to get it installed right? something like that something uh, that I re that. if i can help it's marcy again I, the point was they had graded the swale now to a certain elevation to accept the water off of the the site work that's being proposed in order to further accept more water from the neighbor's properties they were going to have to take it lower even lower than that to to have so that there could be positive pitch from the neighbor's properties i think you know and what i took from the current they've changed the grading where they've taken all the water that was shedding from their site onto the neighbor's properties and they reversed the direction for you know 80 percent of the area which is why there's not going to be as much water going onto the neighbor's properties. So if the, the reason that the neighbor is having water issue on the property is because it's coming off of this site, they've corrected that. The, the, the engineer offered to, to go a little bit deeper with the swale so that they could try to reverse the, the pitch of the neighbor's properties. And that's why the whole discussion of having to regrade on the neighbor's properties came into you know, came into the conversation and then they backed off. And that's why I say, I don't think that the neighbors had a, a, a really good understanding of the, the way and quantity of water that was flowing, you know, on their properties. They see that they get a big rainstorm, they get puddles and it's inconvenient. And it's hard to, you know, explain how that's corrected if it's not something you do every day. It's, Which is uh, something I do every day. So I, I'm not an engineer, but I, I do know, you know, that I do think that the pipe is, you know, although it's it's fine, it will move the water out faster, you know, I don't think it's going to really take water from the neighbors into it unless you grade onto their property. And it certainly isn't needed for the amount of water in the watershed that's going into that swale. So I, do, I think that, that pipe is excessive. Uh, Chadwick speaking is yeah. As long as we're opening this up again, um, you know, this this is sort of like the doorknob moment when you talk to a doctor and all the things that bother you start to come out. But um, we're putting ourselves in kind of an awkward position. Um, the public hearings closed, yet we are taking um, the product of a professional engineer, exposing it to a popular poll and then sort of relitigating the design. And then we've got to adjudicate as a body based on the, the consensus of, of whatever this, this, this set of opinions are that none of which are professional engineers and the outcome of which, if it's a half of a solution may sabotage ultimately the entire solution. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've got like my, my confidence factor in, in that, aside from just the complication of the language is, is, is really um, gone on shaky ground. Okay. Um, That's a really good perspective to it, um, Joe. I think it is important to keep in mind that, you know, the engineer is the one that is designing it and we are not to be redesigning. I'm just trying to communicate what I understand the engineer to as saying from the hearing, and I do understand what the engineer was saying, and I would like to defer to the engineer. Um, okay, I have we heard, uh, I think we heard, who else? Joe Hayuso, yes. But my, my thought is, I, I, I think my understanding, and again, I haven't gone through the hearing, but, but I think Harry summarized my understanding that we, we essentially, you know, the, the engineer was addressing something to address the existing flooding problem on an offsite property. Can, can we do anything to help it since you're doing this other project anyway? And this is what he came up with. And that one person seemed that they didn't like it. Uh, but I don't know if we heard from the other two. I don't mind this process because it allows, you know, uh, allows further input. Uh, and, and if they say no, then no. But I, I mean, I suppose if you had to make a, dis a final decision, and uh, I'd, I'd probably agree with the, with all the 
you know, that it's probably unnecessary. But again, it was proposed by an engineer addressing something that was raised at the public hearing. And, and so I, I don't have a problem leaving it as is because it's, you know, even if, you know, it's, it involves more process, it's more complicated, but it, it, it I, I think it compels a discussion with the engineer and the actual neighbors sort of face to face before they make that call and that can hurt. So, but, but, but I have no problem taking it out either for all the reasons everyone else has said. Um, I just, everyone saw the plan so you can see where, you know, I don't, I think it was intended to not require regrading, but that there would be vegetation removed right at the property edge to install this that would not need to be removed otherwise. But I don't know if even the applicant was clear how much vegetation would have to be removed that wasn't going to be removed anyway to install the swale. So, but um, let me know which, what do you want to do? Sounds like you want to take it out. Well, let's let's take a poll. Okay. Uh, what what uh, Joe Chadwick take it out or leave it? Chadwick out? says take it out. Joe Vayuso. Joe Vayuso says take it out. Marcy. Marcy says take it out. Ma Massimino Massimo, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Massimo says take it out. Okay, I'm the only one that will leave it in. So the take it out. How it goes? Out. Okay, it's out. So right. So, so we're you got to you, you gotta take. You got to add a condition to remove it, then, right? Yep, yep. We'll have to rework O to. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to type some words in, and then I'll share my screen. So give me a moment here. Um, Chuck, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, we got time. Anyone want to? I'm just thinking that as this process goes on, and as and when just before they're install, uh, just be, when they're doing the grading, if there's a, a change, can't they come before us and say uh, with a, a revised plan or something, or with the with the town engineer or something to maybe they may want to put the pipe in. I don't know. I'm just saying, can't this be Resolved as as construction is going on, but I mean we'll take it out now. But if they want to come back with a revised plan, can they do they, that? They, they have no incentive to fix no. the other guy's drainage. It's right. It's take right. it out. It's out. I, it's it's not going out. right. <laughs> that that's why I said leave it in because then we have the option to take it out. That's the only reason. In, but 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 that you know if it's out, it's done. You know we get finality. That's a benefit. We don't have to keep dealing with this. But I don't mind keep dealing with it but anyway. The reason so, why I'm saying take because we had that one neighbor or two neighbors that were very adamant about creating more of a problem installation of that. They were going to cause more damage by putting that pipe in. Yeah, I, I think one of the three said that. I But I don't even, you know, I, I remember somebody saying that. I don't know about the other two. So I don't know. But, but all three were actively at those meetings. They, I mean, it's not like they, they chose not to participate and were going back to them later saying, you know, hey, by the way, you know, you have this option now. Mercy, mercy. Yeah, the other two didn't see it. The inference from silence, I don't know what I what I infer. So, you know, if that's what, I, I don't know what it means. I know one person's against it, so I don't know. So in front of you now is a replacement wording for O, which would read the proposed supplemental stormwater drainage provisions, including three yard drains connecting high density Polyethylene pipe shall be deleted from the site plants. Period. So, that good for everyone? Mercy, sounds, like sounds good. It. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so we're substituting that. Okay. okay. Um. Anything else? Any other? Are you going through this again, Harry? Are you done with the corrections? I am. I think I picked up everything. Um, I think I've discussed everything I've altered. So, um, does anyone have any further questions or comments about this? I've definitely done enough. 
Okay. Then um, here so he is. So this is uh, entitled Revision 2. Okay. <laughs> so okay, these conditions are in a document um, dated July 21st uh, from town planner, including uh, those as modified now on document um, entitled Revision 2. Okay. Okay, then. Um, and this resolution, is this... Get, get to the beginning. How do we label this thing? It's just called. Um, it's just findings and conditions. Okay. So now it says revision two. Okay. So then, um, this, so and this covers both applications, correct? Yes, covers the special exception for the grading and the um, special exception for the open space of residential development, as well as the uh, coastal site plan. Okay. Does some, do someone want to make a motion then to uh, approve the applications by adopting the uh, findings and uh, conditions that are set forth in the memo that Harry just reviewed with stated July 21, 2022, uh, entitled revision number two. Anybody? <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I thought my meeting was off. Marcy, I'll make that motion to okay. okay. Motion made by Marcy. Is there a second? Massimo sure. second. Massimo seconds. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Chadwick? Chadwick is in favor. Joe Bayuso? Joe Bayuso is in favor. Marcy? Marcy's in favor. Massimo? Massimo's in favor. And uh, and uh, chair is also in favor. Massimo, we determined that you were at all the meetings, right? You said that, right? Yes. Okay, just to make it sure. I <laughs> thought we did that. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's through old business. For new business, we have a number of items. Um, we'll just run through them. I think they're all we're scheduled for future meetings, but item number one was Brian Love, Coastal Site Plan for 30 one Thimble Island Road. Is that something we need a public hearing for, Harry? And we'll schedule um, uh, Harry Smith Town Planner, I would suggest um, new business items one through six. Um, uh, the commission could leave that to um, to be determined by uh, Town Planner and the chair as we've done previously. I think there's a standing motion to that effect. Okay. Um, some of these might be ready for September 1st. If so, we'll get them on. Um, a couple of them have wetlands involvement. Um, and um, potentially other issues. Some of them just came in the door, we really haven't looked at them yet. So we have to figure out how fast we can get them through everything. Okay, Does that is that okay with everyone? They all need public hearings, so we'll schedule them when it's uh, appropriate. And I think we have that authority, you know, talk with Harry. Is that good? Joe, that's good, yeah. right? Joe Paiuzo, Marcy. Marcy, that's good. Yeah. It's good. Uh, Sharon, Massimo, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So that gets us quickly through new business. Brings us then to other business, um, which is uh, Avesh Na Naviana and uh, 168 Monoe Street. This is the moving of the bars, the minor site plan modification. What's going on with that, Harry? Um, Harry Smith Town Planner. Um, I'll have to pull that up. I thought I had that up here, but it looks like it slipped away. Um, I just sent the commission a memorandum I put together. In a nutshell, the applicant wanted to uh, add a, uh, a fence along, right along the sidewalk at the edge of the property. This is um, where Allegro, I think it's Allegro, used to be. Um, right where there's a municipal parking lot at South Main Street, Monoese. Um They did not come before you for a conversion. Darbar became interested when Allegro went out and the, uh, the property owner marketed the property, um, but it was not a change of use. So all they really needed was a minor site plan approval for some of the small changes to the building that did get referred to the um, town center review board. And um, I approved the minor for that. Um, they I guess, contacted by a fencing contractor, wanted to put a fence right along the sidewalk edge, right up to the corner of the property, there is a small, looks like a driveway, but actually is a town road called Danburg Place. 
that runs off of South, of, excuse me, of Monoes. Um, so I referred the application to the engineering department. They gave me comments back that basically said it needs to be pulled out of the site triangle uh, for people trying to pull out from Danburg Place on a Monoese. Um, I also got some comments from the Town Center Review Board, basically looking for a little bit more information. Sent those off to the applicant three or four weeks ago, uh, received nothing back. I heard anecdotally through another party that the fencing contractor wasn't working for them anymore. They didn't know if they were going to do the fence. Nobody got back to me. Um, under the regulations, I'm allowed to approve minor site plans, but I'm not allowed to deny them. And there is a clock running on it and nobody's withdrawing the thing. So basically I'm teeing it up for the commission to, um, to deny solely because the engineering department has some comments and concerns. And um, there've been questions raised by the town center board, which has a role in this as well, in terms of um, the referral back to um, commission or staff in terms of the minor. Um, so I'm asking you to deny it. So the clock stops and it's not constructively approved. And okay. they can always come back in. I'm happy to work with them. If they want to, you know, go ahead with it. Um, but I've heard nothing back for weeks. So basically a denial without prejudice. So they denial without deny. prejudice. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, um, I can tell you the, where is that thing? Let me pull it up just so I've got the number in the motion. The number of the application. Isn't it on the is it on the agenda? Um, oh. let me just share my screen. It's on the Oh, I I got it. It's application PZ number 22-263.3 S. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any, any questions from anyone? Not then, does someone want to make a motion to deny without prejudice application number PZ number 22-6.3 S? Chadwick will make that motion. Motion made by Joe Chadwick. Is there a second? Joe Vayuso seconds. Second by Joe Vayuso. Further discussion? All in favor, Joe Chadwick? Chadwick in favor. Joe Vayuso. Are you so in favor? Marcy. Marcy's in favor. Massimo. Massimo's in favor. Chair's also in favor. Okay. Thank you very uh, much. Great. Uh, planner's report. What do you have, Jerry? Um, I'll just uh, give you an update. Uh, the search for replacement for our um, departed zoning enforcement officer is underway. So we have um, those who are on the planner's listserv, or you know, we'll see that there's an ad just going out. I sent a communication out, I think yesterday, last night, and um, we hope we'll get some responses. It was advertised internally also. Um, so we'll keep you posted on that when we meet again in September. Um, I think the chair and I had a quick discussion about possibly having a get together. We never really did anything for the departure of John Lust and uh, Paul Higgins and um, see if maybe there's any interest in doing something. Yeah, my my uh, my thought it, it just never happened. Paul had actually offered his place. We never got around to it. I I know people are away August and whatever. But my thought is I I I wanted to contact them, get a day, maybe just go to the brewery, grab a picnic table, have a pizza and a beer, and I'd I'd send everyone when it is. If you can make it, you can make it. If you can't, you make it. If you can't, whatever. That's it's not an issue. You know, you can send them a note or something like that. But I just wanted to do something. Otherwise, I'm just totally dropping the ball. So does that sound okay with everyone? Just. Uh, yeah, Marcy here. I think he served a really long time and he deserves some kind of a send off. Yep. Yep. Okay. I will look into uh, some kind of, uh, you know, at least uh, some kind of resolution by the Board of Selectmen acknowledging his service or whatever is done, you know. Okay. So I'll take a look at that. Um, that is pretty much it. Um, other than, um, I don't know if you want to talk about it now or you want to talk about it um, possibly, you know, outside of the meeting through emails about whether you want to 
keep on with Zoom for now in September. We would need to figure that out pretty quickly because we'll need to get an ad in the paper for the uh, public hearings for the first. Uh, but that won't be you know needed for at least a couple of weeks. But um, do you want to talk about that now? I'll just throw that out. Yeah, let's quickly talk about it because we're not going to talk about it otherwise. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, we just aren't. I mean, yeah. So, so uh, I, I, you know, we've had this discussion a number of times. I don't know if anything's changed. Joe, uh, Joe Chadwick, I know you're you're generally pro Zoom. Absolutely, yeah. I am. I, I love this. Right. <laughs> um, Joe Bayuso. Joe Bayuso, I prefer in person. Yeah. Uh, Marcy? Uh, I think it should be tied to the COVID rate. <laughs> um, for, you know, I mean, although we're getting ahead of it, I I think I probably prefer home, but I don't mind either. I, you know, is it possible to, you know, alternate, you know, the first meeting of the month is home, the second is Zoom or some compromise there. See how that goes? Um, or is that... that yeah, that's really kind of crazy making for us. Um, one thing we can look into with um, administration is hybrid meetings, which um, we were talking about earlier and whether at some point we certainly have to have the, you know, the wherewithal to do that. Um, so I can look into that with IT and, you know, the selectman's office. Massimo? So I'm normally a face-to-face -face person. It's, um, it's the way I've, I've done all my life, but I am loving Zoom uh, with these meetings and I would love to be able to keep it like this. Okay, Sharon? I'm a pro Zoom girl. Okay, I'm, uh, I probably prefer in person, but I like Zoom too. I mean, I did a Zoom meet, whatever. The last meeting I did in Nashville, by the way, it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, May I ask oh, what the other commissions are doing? Huh? Ms. Marcia, what are the other commissions doing? Like, what is it Wetlands still Zoom? Is UVA still Zoom? Wetlands has been Zoom all the way along, I believe. Um, a ZBA, I. Evan, do they still in person? Or are they talking about going to Zoom? I can't remember. Uh, they have been in Zoom for the past few months, and okay. I didn't bring it up last night, but I would assume that they want to continue to do so. It, they're at, yeah, okay. It, it, it sounds like I, I would love to push the hybrid if we could, so we could meet in person and still do Zoom. I mean, if there's any way to push that, uh, yeah. I don't know. But, but it sounds like absent that, we're probably going to continue Zoom. I don't know. Okay. I, I would love to even have an alternate. I know it's a pain here. You can't do it, you know, it to for no it, purposes. It really, gonna, yeah. Because I, you know, to me that would be ideal to have a little bit of both. But but sounds like that is that's that logistically is a mess. But I would love if we could get a, a decent hybrid because then then you could then you could choose. You know? Yep. Yep. I will look into that over the summer and okay. uh, as they say, we'll see you in September. <laughs> right, yeah, so I think we're, we're gonna continue. Or earlier, if we have our thing in August, so hopefully we will do that. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll actually see people if we do something. And it will yep. just, you know, I, I just wanna get it done. <clears throat> so anything else from anyone? Nothing. Okay, so I think uh, someone will make a motion to adjourn. So, so move. So move. Okay, we got seconds. Okay, motion made and seconded. All those in favor, Joe Chadwick in favor. Chadwick in favor. Joe Bayuso. So in favor. Marcy. Marcy's in favor. Massimo. Massimo's in favor. Chair's also in favor. So good night, everyone, till September. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you all. Good See you all. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BranfordTV.org.